time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today on Our Lounge. Sometimes we have to outrun the past. Not everybody has pure intentions. Today on Our Lounge, say goodbye to the old you. It's time for a new start. I'm leaving my family. I'm typing this in a mix of fear and nerves. I'm the youngest, 22, of five kids. Male, 30, male, 28, female, 28, twins, and female, 25. My parents are heavily religious, and we live in Utah. Growing up, everything had to be done perfectly. It didn't matter if it was grades, looks, social activities, or even friends. I'm different from my siblings as I was never interested in the maths, science like they were. I've always been a writer, the painter. I remember once when I was 13, I made a painting of a dove in a snowy field and won first in the competition. I told my parents who got angry that I had wasted my time with something so worthless when I should have been using the time to study. I still had A's in every class. My mother won't even say more than a few words to me. She always seems like she hates me, and I don't understand. Father burned the painting to remind me of what was truly important before taking all of my art supplies until I showed more responsibility with my time. It's been like this as long as I can remember. I work full time and have since I was 15 at McDonald's, dashing every bit of money I could. Father took half of my checks as tithing to help teach me what being an adult was like. I applied to several colleges but was told by my parents that they would not be helping me with tuition as they did for my siblings because they thought sending me to college would just be a waste of money. So I got angry. I'm so tired of being the black sheep just because I like the arts more than maths and science. And then I heard them talking when I got up in the middle of the night about the perfect man they'd found who was willing to take me in. Through our church, I'm terrified and so I'm leaving. I've got some money saved up, a good amount, and I'm leaving the country. I found a job that lets me work remote, doing freelance design work, and I've had my passport since I was a kid because our family vacations overseas. I'm taking nothing other than a change of clothes, my laptop, and important documents I took out of my father's office. I booked a flight that leaves in five hours and I'm never coming back. I'm not even going to take my phone since I'd need to get a new number anyway. My best friend, God bless her, had been the one booking things and getting everything ready since I couldn't tip off my parents. She's also smuggled some of my more important things I can't take to hold on to for me. She's parking down the street and I'll leave with my smallest suitcase to meet her. I don't know how they'll take this. I'm terrified they'll find a way to drag me back or track me down. They went to bed over an hour ago, but I'm too anxious to sleep. I don't know if I'll ever have any updates, but I just hope they don't stop me. I think you're definitely in your rights to leave. You're 22. You're a grown woman. You can do whatever you want. You don't need your parents' approval. If you feel at all unsafe, get the heck out of there. The environment you're in sounds toxic. I mean, the fact that you are fearful of leaving says it all. Update. Thank you all so much for your words and advice. Other than my friend, no one else knew about all of this. I thought I'd explain some things before telling everything that's happened. So I did think about the police, but my uncle is a sheriff and he is still very close with my father. I didn't dare to go to them for anything because I fear they would have just told my father. The church is widespread and mainstream, Latter-day Saints, but I hope that my father wouldn't be able to pull enough strings in it to get to me. My siblings are also involved with the church and my parents, though only I was forced to live at home until I had a husband to support me. I don't get along with them as they've never seen anything wrong with how my parents treat me. My friend is completely amazing. She really is. She was ready and waiting for me when I crawled out through my window to meet her, even though it was three in the morning. She bought my tickets to South Africa. I'm in a hotel room. I landed only two hours ago after several layovers. Each time I was so worried that customs would decline or deny my entrance, but they didn't. I haven't slept yet. Too wired up and twitchy. My hope is to gain citizenship and I'm almost fluent in Zulu and I've always been a fan of languages. I already have an email from my father, but I haven't opened it yet. One thing my friend did when I met her in the car was that she'd bought another small suitcase and made me move my things to it before chucking my old one in a dumpster behind Taco Bell. She was worried that they may have put a tracker or air tag in the lining of my old one. I was afraid I'd see someone I knew at the airport, but Salt Lake International is massive and I didn't run across anyone. I haven't decided if I should renounce my US citizenship when I gain my new one. Once my brain settles a bit, I'm going to start looking into apartments to get out of the hotel. Oh, that's unsettling. I now have emails from my siblings and uncle. I'll try to update in a few days when I've calmed down and figured out where I'm going to go from here. 
Thank you all for your comments, advice, and thoughts. I was not expecting so many people to be invested into this as the only ones who known was my friend. It's not unusual for them to try to reach out to you as they discovered you weren't there. But like I said, you're old enough to be taking charge of your own life, even if your parents are super religious or not. If you want to leave the country, that's within your right as you're an adult. Update 2. I'm leaving left my family. Wow, so much has been happening lately that it's kept my head on a swivel constantly. I'll start with the good part of the update before moving on to the less happy bits. So, I was advised to remove the location destination from my post. So, all I will say is that I'm in South Africa right now and it's amazing. The food is astonishing and a poster here messaged me to recommend that I try bunny chow, which is actual authentic curry in a bread bowl. It was phenomenal. I got to chatting with one of the hotel staff. She's about my age and we really hit it off. She went with me to a local shopping center to get some new and better clothes. At least I'm used to wearing dresses, so that doesn't faze me, and they're very lightweight and breathable, unlike a lot of US dress fabrics. She also told me to always shake out my clothes every morning just in case. I've started apartment hunting, and it's well within my budget. Like, super low compared to how sky high it is in the US. It's honestly jaw-dropping. Like $81 for a loft and a kitchenette. So yeah, housing won't be an issue. And it is a bit odd to be house shopping for myself when I've always lived with my parents. Now on to the less pleasant bits. I finally opened the emails, deciding it was best to probably get it over with. My father's email was filled with anger. There's no other way to put it. He said that by taking off irresponsibly like I did cost them the friendship of someone they'd planned on introducing to me. He never admitted that it was the 53-year-old they'd basically sold me to. Father stated that because of the social conditions that had been damaged and impacted by my actions, I owed them approximately $85,000 in reparations. He also claims that he will be taking me to court if I don't pay to it in full within 30 days and return home as I obviously cannot be trusted. I plan to ignore that as I believe him to be bluffing. He ended his email rant with, You belong to me and I won't tolerate such defiance when we've put a roof over your head and taken care of you for your entire life. You were never the child we expected. It's time you make up for your deficiencies. I expect you home within the next two weeks. Yeah, no. My siblings were basically copies of my father's email, admonishing me for throwing the efforts of our parents in their faces before running off like a coward, unwilling to face the fallout of my actions. I skimmed them honestly, before just deleting them. It's nothing I didn't expect. However, my sister-in-law, she's married to my eldest brother, sent her own email before asking me not to reply, as she would only be deleting every sign she sent it from her end. She congratulated me on stepping out on my own and getting away from my parents and their demands. She said that she herself hadn't been strong-willed enough to stand up to her parents when they basically betrothed her to my brother, which makes sense as I remember that they met and then married within six months, and even then I thought it was a bit strange. She pleaded with me not to return and not to reply. That was it. It was a bit unnerving, honestly, as I do believe her, and I'm sad that she is stuck the way she is. The last email was from my best friend. She said that the morning after I flew out, my parents had been on their doorstep demanding to see me. Apparently they believed I was hiding with her. They refused to leave, screaming for me to stop pretending I wasn't there. It caused enough of a scene that the police were called, but they only talked to my parents briefly and let them leave. It really angered my friend, who'd wanted them arrested for threats and trespassing. The police only claimed that there wasn't a pattern of behavior that would warrant them being arrested and charged before just leaving. She didn't know when they realized I wasn't there at her house, but they didn't come back, thankfully. However, word has spread of me fleeing the safety of my parents' home and how they wanted me to return as they were concerned and fearful of what may happen with me out on the streets alone. The church ward has actually done searches of the area trying to find me. I don't know what they'll do from here, but they have no idea I left the country, let alone the state. My friend has no plans to say anything and neither do I. As far as I'm concerned right now, they can live with that state of wondering for the rest of eternity. I don't think I will renounce my US citizenship as there may come a day when I need it and it's better to be safe than sorry. But I have full plans to gain dual citizenship as soon as I am able to. That's it for now, no other parts yet. But if anything changes, I'll let you know. I want to thank you all for your comments and private messages. It feels like I've gotten friends and family on my side and I cannot tell you how much that means to me, truly. Thank you, all of you. Yeek, to think that your father believed you were his personal property, that's horrific. I'm so sorry, OP. It sounds like he was putting your safety at risk. 
You were right to get away, OP. Update 3. I'm leaving my family. So much advice and support from everyone. I cannot thank you all enough. I thought with all the comments and questions I thought I'd answer here and explain what's happened since my last post. Ironically, my use of maths instead of just math came from my mother, who is British, and met my father in England when they were 22. So I did come by it naturally, and my siblings say it was that way as well. I thank you for drawing my attention to the TikTok videos broadcasting my story, though why they changed the name I don't know. I did report them, but we'll have to see if they ever pull the videos down, or at least edit them. Second is people questioning why I chose South Africa, and Johannesburg of all places because of how dangerous it can be. I do understand the risks, but there is nowhere on this planet that is inherently danger free. Africa is massive and incredibly diverse. Finding someone would be very difficult, and because those videos got so much attention, I have left Johannesburg sadly. I'm very far though, obviously still in Africa. The area I'm in now is incredibly safe, and came highly recommended by several people. Settling here will be very comfortable, and the people are wonderful. I may even attend a university here and get a degree. I haven't replied to the emails, but I have saved them and printed copies and laminating them just in case. I will not be renouncing my US citizenship, and my passport is good for another eight years. I don't hate religion, regardless of what it is. In my eyes, a person's relationship with God is incredibly personal. If a person connects with him via camping or walks, long drives, listening to music, acts of service, that's their choice, and it's just as valid in my opinion as sitting in a pew is. Possibly more as they're at honest with themselves instead of just putting on a false facade in the public eye. I plan on ignoring any further emails from my family other than printing them out just in case. They've made several phone calls to my friend who's had fun with them. The first time your father called yelling that I hand you over, I pretended to be cowed and gave him your location. It took him to a strip club. He came back screaming at how I had embarrassed him. I just hung up on him honestly. She did that each time they called, giving a different location each time. Her favorite was sending my parents to a nudist retreat. My mother passed out apparently. My friend is looking to move and eventually plans to join me, but will jump around a bit so they don't follow her to me. I did finally read my uncle's email, but it was just a copy of my father's with the added comment that he and his fellow cops would be looking for me to bring me home safe before I got myself in trouble and hurt. I'm being watchful, and I know better than to wander into dark alleyways and abandoned places. That's all I've got for now. If anything changes, I will let you know. It's heartwarming seeing and reading how many people are on my side and in my corner. I've actually begun printing out everyone's messages and comments to put in a binder I can look back on later. Truly, thank you all. I mean it. Update 4. I'm leaving my family. Hello everyone. It's been a while since my last update, and a few things have happened that I was told by my friend that I needed to share since everyone was still clearly rooting for me. I have settled in a bit here, and I'm now enjoying the fun of paperwork. Oh, so much paperwork. I have secured an apartment, and while it's two bedrooms, one is for my friend when she comes to join me. I've made a few acquaintances here locally and I'm beginning to stand on my own a bit. My biggest challenge has been dealing with feeling uncomfortable because I don't know all of those unspoken rules the way I did in the US. As such, I'm constantly second guessing myself, but hopefully that will fade with time. So family, my family has learned I left the state. How they did, I'm not sure. They do, however, seem convinced that I am still in the continental US. My friend works as a cartoonist and while she doesn't make a large amount of money, she makes more than enough to live comfortably. She's getting ready to leave herself and decided to send my parents a farewell gift. She didn't tell me about this until just a little bit ago. She spent a few hours carefully drawing my parents as they visited each location she sent them to, including their reactions and all the scenes were ended with the phrase, abity, 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 that's all folks. Sadly, while I've never seen Looney Tunes, as she's named it, she said she portrayed my dad as similar to a coyote. I'm still not 100% sure what that means, but she said everyone else would. Before then, ordering me to watch it, maybe one day. She should be joining me around October 9th, after country hopping several times. All the things she hasn't sold are in a secured storage unit, including the things she's been holding for me. The biggest revelation came after my father. Well, he had a meltdown apparently after I never responded to him. He got into a fight with my mother in church, and many things were said. Among those, according to several that my mother had cheated on my father, which, well, led to me. Which is why she never liked me, I guess, as I just reminded her of her mistakes. My father took her back in spite of that, but, well, there it is. It caused a big stir in the ward, and meetings were held, though I obviously don't know what was said or done. I may never know, honestly. 
I'm trying to move on and I'm even contemplating getting a tattoo. Part of me really wants to, while another points out that if I change enough and father finds me, he won't want me then. That's all really for now. I'm not sure if I'll have anything else to share, but if anything happens, I'll let you all know. Thank you for all the messages and comments. I do read them all, and it means more than you'll ever know. I cannot imagine what it would be to live in hiding. I'm so sorry, OP. It sounds like there's a lot of things that led to why you were treated that way you are, all of which are out of your control. The fact that you might not even be the child of the man you call your father gives reasoning as to why you were treated like the black sheep. They treat you the way they do because you remind them of how imperfect they are. Your existence quite literally goes against what they preach so loud and proud about in terms of the church. All that's to say the important thing you can do is protect yourself. Honestly, you really shouldn't have anybody coming to meet you at all. Nobody should know your whereabouts. It sounds like your family and the church are capable of some really heinous things. You need to say goodbye to the old you. What would you do? Thank you for following along today. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to share regarding today's content, we want to hear it. See you soon on our lounge.